Hello, I'm Arthur Schweidmann and today I'd like to give you a talk on maximizing the acquisition function of Bayesian optimization to guaranteed global optimality. Thank you very much for listening. In the recent years, we've seen a development from manually conducting chemical experiments to machine-assisted chemical experiments towards a full automation of conducting chemical experiments. And at the same time, the way how we design and plan chemical experiments has changed from manually planning to DOE methods. And now that we have full automation of chemical experiments, we also need to think about how can we automate the process of designing chemical experiments. And one promising method for that is artificial intelligence. However, when we compare the planning of chemical experiments to many big data problems that are solved through artificial intelligence, we can identify a few challenges. In particular, many problems in our domain are very different compared to playing games, computer vision and speech. In particular, we have quite high experimental cost that leads to limited data and we also have mixed integer decisions. And that means that we have a combination between continuous variables, such as pressure, temperature, flow rate, and integer variables, such as what catalyst do I use? What solvent do I use? In addition to that, we also have partially uh, physical knowledge available. And therefore, our problems are not big data problems, and convolutional neural networks, reinforcement learning, and many techniques from AI are often not suitable for our problems. Instead, we require more data efficient and more transparent AI techniques in order to solve our problems. In addition to that, we would like to have the quantification of the uncertainty of the predictions of our models. And one very promising way to, to do that are Gaussian processes and Bayesian optimization. We can use that for optimal decision making in automated chemistry. So what is a Gaussian process? Gaussian process is a surrogate model that is interpolating and it provides not only a prediction but also variants of the predictions. And we can use that in order to identify a so-called acquisition function. And one example for that is the expected improvement acquisition function. What you can see here is an example for this acquisition function, where you have a high expected improvement in regions where you can see a high variance and a relatively um, high prediction. In this, this case here we want to minimize the prediction, so we have a relatively low prediction. At the same time, what we can see this expected improvement goes to zero in regions where we have no variance. Because when we have no variance available, there's no potential to improve over our current predictions. And we can combine this expected improvement with an experimental system to run experiments automatically. By doing that, we can repeat this process, we can update our data, and we can automatically optimize chemical reactions. So the key problem here is that we need to find the optimum of this expected improvement acquisition function. And as you can see here, this function has multiple local optima. It's very important that you find the global optimum because that gives us the most informative and most promising chemical experiment. There are different ways to optimize these functions. First of all, there's local optimization, where we use gradient information to improve an objective locally. However, what you can see here on the left-hand side is that local optimization can get stuck in local optima, in particular if you have multiple local optima, such as in this acquisition function. Another way to do that is global, uh, stochastic global optimization, 
such as genetic algorithms, simulated annealing and so on. We can use heuristics in order to search globally for the optimal solution. However, it's very difficult to stop these algorithms or terminate them. And you do not get any guarantee that these algorithms converge to global optimality. There's a third class of optimization algorithms, which is called deterministic global optimization algorithms. And these use branch and bound algorithms in order to guarantee global optimality. And how that works is basically you start with a local solver in order to find the lower bound on the optimal solution. And then we identify a convex overestimator of our functions, which gives us an upper bound on the global optimum. And then we branch on our domain, so we subdivide the domain and repeat this pro uh, process on the subdomains. What you can see here is the lower bound and the upper bound converge and we can guarantee global optimality. And if we go through the literature, people have used local optimization in order to optimize problems with Gaussian processes embedded. So for example, acquisition function problems. However, many of them got stuck in local, uh, local solutions. There are a few applications such as our previous work on Bayesian optimization that uses stochastic global algorithms. And there are only a very few works that use deterministic global algorithms. And why is that? Because they found that it's very difficult to optimize these problems using deterministic global optimization. And the reason for that is that if you write down a Gaussian process, such as done on the left hand side here, so you want to minimize the prediction of a Gaussian process, prediction is given by this formula. We have a covariance function or inverse of a covariance function. And then here covariance vector, prediction vector. And if you write down this optimization problem, you end up with a large number of optimization variables and a large number of equality constraints. However, what we proposed in our recent work is to solve this problem in a so-called reduced space. What we do in the reduced space optimization is to basically eliminate all equality constraints. So we solve for the equalities. And then instead of providing the optimizer all constraints and variables separately, we handle them internally in our code and we propagate McCormick relaxations as well as necessary subgradients and derivatives through the computer code. And therefore we can construct the convex relaxations that are necessary for global optimization. And we can still keep a very small problem size where we scale only with the number of degrees of freedom. So the input dimensionality of the Gaussian process. And having this small problem size, we can accelerate global optimization. Let's give you a small example for that. What you can see here is a 2D example. It's a peaks function. The peaks function has multiple local optima and we generate data from this function <coughs> ranging from 20 to 100 data points. And then we train Gaussian processes on the peaks function and we optimize the prediction of the Gaussian process. What you can see here is if you want to solve this optimization problem, so optimizing the prediction of a Gaussian process in the full space, either in Baron or Mango, whereas Baron is a uh, state of the art global solver, which is commercially available. And Mango is our in-house tool, which is uh, open source, so freely available. We can see that we solve these problems in the order of 400 uh, CPU seconds, for uh, Gaussian processes with about 100 data points. However, if we formulate the same problem in the reduced space, we can solve it much faster. So we can solve problems with 100 data points in about 0.6 seconds. 
So we can see that the reduced space outperforms the full space formulation for problems with Gaussian processes embedded. And we get a speed of a factor of over 700. So why should we do this global optimization of the acquisition function? Is it really worth it? So we conducted an experiment here. What you can see on the left hand side here is a regret. The regret is the difference between the best solution found in our Bayesian optimization, so kind of the best experimental result we have found so far, compared to the global optimum. So if the regret is zero, we actually have found the global optimum of our function. And then the number of iterations down here is basically the number of experiments we conduct. So we start with two experiments that are just randomly generated, and then we start the Bayesian optimization. And we did this using 50 random initialized local searches. What you can see here are box plots. So it gives us the range of the results that we have if we use local optimization. And what you see is if you're lucky, you basically get a regret of zero. So you find the optimal solution after about 18 experiments. However, if you're unlucky, you might end up up here. So we have a huge difference between the global optimum and the best one you've found so far. Whereas most of the experimental results are within this blue box here. So if you don't do local optimization of the acquisition function, but instead you do global optimization, you end up with this line basically. And what you can see is you reach uh, the global optimum of your experimental result much faster for example, about 14 experiments you require here, you get the guarantee that you found this solution. So what we see here is the global optimization of the acquisition function can actually reduce experimental cost for optimization. All right, another advantage of the branch and bound algorithms is that we can handle mixed integer decisions easily. And that means, for example, in this uh, problem here, mixed integer problem is a problem where we combine discrete decisions or integer decisions together with continuous ones. In this example here, we try to design um, uh, membranes in order to get a very good uh, retention. And we have two continuous variables, which are these two here, basically concentrations and then an integer variable, which is the number of layers of the membranes. And we can solve this problem within about seven uh, CPU minutes, where we find an expected retention with a corresponding uncertainty or standard deviation, um, which is a very promising experiment because it maximizes the expected retention. Okay, so if you want to use this uh, set up in your uh, chemical experiment, for example, you can do it by using the Melon Toolbox that we have developed. Melon Toolbox is a machine learning optimization um, toolbox and provides you machine learning models such as neural networks and Gaussian processes. And you can use the models in the Melon Toolbox automatically in our global solver Mango. And we also interface to Keras, uh, TensorFlow, and so on. So you can train the machine learning models directly in your uh, favorite uh, machine learning toolbox. And then we export it to our solver Mango. And of course, everything is open source available. So you can just download it and use it. Okay, let me conclude. Uh, I've presented to you the reduced space formulation which enables deterministic global optimization with Gaussian processes embedded. And we've seen that global optimization of the acquisition function enhances the performance of Bayesian optimization. And our approach also allows to solve mixed integer problems. In addition, the software is available open source in the toolboxes Melon and Mango. And we hope that this enables us to utilize recent developments in machine learning 
for automated chemistry in the future. Thank you very much for listening to my talk and I'm happy to see you at the conference.